This is Grant Sell's website where he lists a load of microprocessor and retro computer projects. Uh, one of them is his Simple Z80, which is this one, um, which in that format is a um, 64K version. He also lists a 32K version, which is even simpler. And here's the diagram. And one or two people have had boards made for these. Um, this one is done by Jeff Tranter and he's kindly made it publicly available on um, Easy EDA uh, so you can order the boards for yourself. And um, here's one which I've completed. This is a 6810 UART, the Z80. My favourite NV RAMs. I do, I do like non volatile RAMs so that they retain programs with the power off. And the um, EEPROM, which is a 28B64. That's pin equivalent of a. 2764 EEPROM and if you've never used EEPROMs and you're still erasing with ultraviolet these really are a revelation so much easier and quicker so that's the board Grant's original simple Z80 design is a pure basic machine it just runs Microsoft Basic uh, which is fantastic for Star Trek, Sargon Chess and for uh, playing with the David Arl uh, basic game, 101 basic games book. Um, if you want a bit of uh, 70s retro nostalgia programming uh, basic, um, it's fantastic for that. But um, I just wanted to go a little bit deeper, always do. Uh, if I fire up Terra Term, I already have Star Trek in there because of the non volatile RAM. Uh, and um, if we if we reset the board, uh, just press the reset button. What I've done here is I've extended that cold warm or monitor. Um, cold start means it clears out any current basic program, starts again from scratch. Warm means it retains the existing um, basic program, so that it's still in memory. You can still run it straight away. And monitor is a new command. Um, it's an 8K basic in an 8K EEPROM, and because Grant has taken out things that are irrelevant like cassette interfacing and uh, stuff to do with the NASCOM screen and keyboard which were all built in, it's left space which is just a nice amount for a um, monitor to fit within the 8K uh, EEPROM. So if I say M monitor we get the prompt MON. Let me just zoom in on that. There we go. Now, it's a typical monitor, it's only just over uh, 500 bytes, so don't expect miracles, but um, it does most of the um, commands that you'd expect of a, a simple monitor of the time. The first one, the very simplest, is B for basic. Puts you back to the cold warm on monitor. If I say warm, I can run again, and we're back in Star Trek. If I reset back into the monitor, I can display memory, D8000, and get the uh, bytes and the ASCII, if it's printable ASCII. And it has several commands. It, has, um, it does arithmetic, so I can say uh, arithmetic, and I want to do 9540, and... 9500 zero, zero. and what it gives me there is the sum that one plus that one the difference the second one minus the first one and if this was a program that you were hand coding and you were at um, 9540 and you wanted to do a relative jump back to 9500 that is the relative jump offset you would need so the code for a jump is 18 relative jump is 18 so the 18 would be followed by BE 18BE would jump from 9540 to 9500. It's just a handy way of working out relative jumps without having to uh, count it manually. It does a, a copy, um, so I've got some memory here, F displaying from FA00, and you, as you can see it's just full of rubbish. And there's some text here at F800, so I can say copy from F800 to FA00. And uh, we'll say copy 20 bytes. If we now display FA00, which was all this rubbish, 
So now I've got the copied text in there, so it's a copy. It's an intelligent copy as well. If the areas overlap, it doesn't corrupt anything. It knows which way to copy it. It has an Intel hex loader, so if I display memory from FD00, you'll see it's just full of random rubbish, whatever the RAM powered up with. Uh, if I say I, that's the Intel hex loader command, and then I send a file, and the file is on D, and it's called hex test dot hex. If I send that, and for every block it reads, it prints a little dot, so you know there's some progress. But you can also see the progress on the uh, serial USB module, and you see the LED flashing. So now if we display from FD00, you should see code that the uh, Intel hex file has loaded. G is the go-to command to run a program, so if I say GFD00, and all this program does is it prints a little message, over and over again, keeps printing it until you press X. It's just to test that the hex loader is working, that's all. So we're back into the monitor again. So that's the Intel hex loader. What else have we got? Um, modify memory. So if I say M F D double O C D six eight F D if you want to change that we just type in a number full stop to end the uh, modify session if we dfd double o display instead of this you should see the 556677 which is there so you've got modify uh, so that's basic arithmetic modify intel hex loader copy go to a program i think that's it um, the changes are, it's in three parts. Um, there's a change to the interrupt driven I.O. thing that's right at the beginning of the ROM. There's a change to that to give you the cold warm or monitor. There's also the um, basic itself, which at the moment the command monitor just resets the whole thing. Needs changing, so if you type monitor on the existing setup that would just reboot the thing and you get the um, cold, war, cold or warm message again but on this one it actually puts you into the monitor so monitor works, so that's a change to the interrupt I.O. thing um, a simple small change to the basic and then the actual code of the monitor itself which lives right at the top of the uh, EE prom so there you go um, gives you a 32k retro computer in five chips with um, program retention on power off and uh, I'll just demonstrate that if you like uh, there we go, just switch off that thing's without power now plug back in again warm start run and we're back into Star Trek, so that's power retention um, program retention during power off. Um, what else can I tell you? It makes a really useful uh, little computer with the uh, addition of the monitor. Very much like my old NASCOM. It really reminds me of my old NASCOM one from the uh, bad old days. But um, of course it's much much more reliable. I've done a simple hardware change as well. It's not necessary but it's just nice to have. The reset circuit on Gramps original is just simply a pull-up resistor on the reset line and a button to ground so there's no power on reset at all you have to press the button to reset it and all I've done is to add a um, DS1233 between pause, neg and reset which are conveniently very close together on the underside of the Z80 so the DS1233 it just looks like a little transistor the three legs just conveniently fall into place under the Z80 and it means you get a proper power on reset uh, with a 300 millisecond delay and it also debounces any manual press of the reset button as well so I think it's worth doing and they're only about a quid each the uh, DS1233s I'll put links in the description to Grant's site uh, particularly the 32, 32k version which is what we've got here and to uh, Easy EDA uh, where I got the boards and thanks to Jeff Tranter um, he's made them 
uh, publicly available. I had 10 done so I've got 9 spares if anybody wants one at cost. Um, and also links to the files on philg.uk where you can uh, download the EEPROM contents and, and modify your own board so it's the same as this with the monitor and everything. One thing I do uh, very much uh, like is the um, NV RAMs. Uh, having no storage at all it's great to be able to switch this thing off uh, come back to it a week later switch it on and play Star Trek without having to load anything it's brilliant. Um, these NV RAMs, if, if I was to specify a particular one, a week later you'd probably find it's out of stock, but they're all the same, if it's a buy wide um, NV RAM, they're all pretty much the same. There are also some Cypress uh, F RAMs as well, which are the same pinout, um, same sort of thing, but they don't use a battery, but they do retain during power off. So there's the 48Z35, there's the Dallas DS ones. Uh, there's some ST ones, they're all pretty much exactly the same so I'm not going to link to a particular one because stock is up and down at the moment but any bike wide 32k by 8 and VRAM is, uh, is just spot on for the job. I have a variety and I use them in all sorts of projects. There you go, thanks very much, cheers!